time for mash. Mash is here, mash is here, and mash are the icons here. I think currently mash is in version number three. It's Maya 2018. We're at the beginning of the year 2018 now. Probably many of you will be watching this video years later, but uh, that's how time goes by. What you see here is new in MASH 2, so it's been around a year already, and uh, it has to do with ecosystems. Why ecosystems? Well, Ian Waters and friends seem to have had the idea to plant trees, etc., in a certain way and uh, demonstrate how they distribute over a landscape etc. That's the basic thought behind this. And uh, if you look closely you see uh, with all this shaking the, the little objects avoid each other. They never touch each other and they kind of grow in a certain random more or less random way and that's part of that ecosystem which is called the MASH world node. So let me show you how this comes about. We create a new scene. Maybe you've seen that the objects I've just demonstrated were not ordinary primitives here in the polygon modeling world, but they came from here. Right mouse click, spherical harmonics. Look at this object, it's a perfect sphere. Now you go in the attribute editor, you go to the uh, settings of the super shape and uh, you can reduce the horizontal divisions to three and the vertical divisions to three as well so ha we have a pretty rough sphere now and then we clicked uh, on the random button which creates randomly if you click again you see a totally different uh, object but this I think I quite like it and this is maybe we can reduce it to two yeah that's good too and this one yeah that that's a nice shape very simple and since mash deals with hundreds if not thousands of objects it's always good to have a, a simple starting geometry okay so we start with this object we go to the mash node he, um, tab here and then we click with this object selected, this icon. We immediately see 10 of them. Now let's reduce them, mash distribute, to, well, three. So if we have three of them, and we don't want to see the, the grid, it doesn't matter anyway. We'll color them in a second. Um, mash, color, add a color node, and we click on the white shading thing here, and um, the color mash node has random settings, so you can change the colors here like this. So that would be quite a dramatic change, which is okay. And the uh, saturation and the value you can um, um, vary as well. Go back to the mash node, uh, which is called the mash waiter, which currently deals with deals with three objects. We'll see lots of more now. This is the world node add the world node. So we have lots of them now and uh, we see them only in pink and go to this icon here and it shows you how they are ordered, the mesh nodes are ordered. So we start with the distribute then we add the color and then the world. How about moving the color up here? So we have the color as the last node. We have a nice distribution now of colors, at least, of always the same object. So let's go to the world node here and check out what's uh, ha happening here. We have something which is called a cluster. And the cluster is currently set to ball. That's why it's sort of a volume distribution here. Could be a disk as well, so it's flat could be a circle so it's actually two circles I'll show you in a second why that is and a, f 
uh, Fibonacci spiral, etc. Interesting objects, but uh, you will only appreciate them uh, when you have many more, uh, which we won't cover in this uh, section. Uh, the ori original idea for this uh, node, the world node, is the terrestrial ecosystem. And uh, Ian Waters has put a couple of tutorials out there where he shows how trees naturally uh, distribute over a surface, a landscape. And uh, that's what this thing is uh, meant for. It creates, you use a map, you can use a, a really uh, statistical, statistically correct uh, biological, geological maps to, uh, to uh, input in here. But uh, we will stick to this very simple circle, which sh shows basically the the uh, basic idea, really. So uh, why do we see sort of two circles, but not exactly two circles? Go back to the mesh distribute node, and uh, the originals are right here, here and here, I guess. So they're s uh, somewhere hidden here. Um, if we change the distance of the originals, see, now you can see them. And now you can imagine it's three circles. And when we move them closer together, you see the particles, the individual objects, uh, try to avoid each other. They change the color and they never penetrate each other. Well, right here with a uh, distribution of a distance of zero they do, but basically they try to avoid each other. So let's increase the number of points in the original distributions to four. So we have four circles now, which we see now. So we can raise this no, uh, number value from 60 to 100. So that's four circles now. Uh, so here you see the originals, the small ones, and what the world m node makes of them. Now, um, the trick to make the originals invisible but still working is seen here in the mesh world node again. Previous points mode. Keep. No, we want to kill them. We want to kill them and not avoid them. So they still work there. So the distribution, when we go back to the distribution and uh, raise the number of points to, say, 5, it actually works with a 5. OK, back to the world node. Let's open the cluster section. It's a big section, which is, to some people, intimidating to others, like my humble self, inviting. So the points per cluster is 10. So we have 10 around here. How about 15? And here we have random points per cluster. So they have different amounts of objects in the circle. The radius, let's reduce this to 1. So we have thinner ones. Now let's change the background to black. And uh, the minimum separation is right here. They kind of affect each other over that big distance. And uh, it all has to do with a cluster radius here. That's the radius of the whole system, which um, is, I think, quite crucial for uh, lots of animations here. So how I did the animations are very simple. Um, I change the playback range to like 400 and I set a keyframe for say the radius at the very beginning and a keyframe for the radius back here again the same radius one and right in the middle I can raise the radius like this or make it smaller like this set another keyframe here so the animation goes like this now they just th shrink, they just get smaller. Now um, I go to the distribute node and I key frame at frames 26 or 4, whatever, set a key here for the distance in this axis here. I do the same, uh, set the same keyframe again here a little bit later and in between 
I move the distance value back to say 20 and set another keyframe. Now the whole animation goes like this. They become smaller, they move together, they penetrate, interpenetrate each other, and then they move away from each other. So um, we go back to the world node and we change the points per cluster now. So let's go to frame um, 80 sort of, set a keyframe for the amount of uh, points here, set another keyframe, the same keyframe here uh, a little bit later, and in the middle we set the points per cluster to say 40. And now we see a totally different uh, simulation because all of a sudden we get much more points here. Right now. You can set the radius var variance here with a function equals 2 plus sine time. That's the that's a variance which I just animated with the expression. You will find more things about this in the tutorials by Ian, and uh, this is the one the thing where the where the core idea lies. Try your best, and in the meantime, I show you some Fibonacci.